I'm going to ask your forgiveness this morning and ask you to bear with me. Um, I look and sound horrible this morning because I'm not feeling well. But I wanted to take and press through and, and bring you this message this morning. In the 11th chapter of Matthew, Jesus says some of the most comforting words that we'll ever hear. He says, Come unto me, all ye who are weary and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. We're all weary. We're weary collectively as a nation. We are going through some crazy and turbulent and chaotic times, and we are all weary. I heard a new commercial this morning, or at least it was new for me, on the radio this morning, and the tagline said, nothing is normal and everything is weird. And I kind of think that fits 2020 to a T. So we're all weary, but we're also all burdened. We're all burdened by different things, although we have some of the same burdens in common. So if you are burdened and feeling the heavy weight of an illness or a physical disability, if you can't do the things you used to do and want to do, if you're feeling sick and tired of being sick and tired, Jesus bids you come. Come unto him. If you are burdened and weary of worrying about a loved one's health condition, if you're taking care of them and it's wearing you down, or if just worrying about their care and the possibility of losing them is weighing you down, Jesus bids you to come. Come unto him. If you're grieving, if you're grieving the loss of a loved one and you're missing them and you wish you could hear their voice one more time, if you're burdened down by that grief, Jesus bids you come, come unto him. If you're having financial problems, struggling to make ends meet and it's getting weary and the burden is getting heavier, Jesus bids you come. Come unto him, and he will give you rest. Let's take a moment, though, and notice what he didn't say. He didn't say, come unto me, and I will make your problem go away. He didn't even say, come unto me, and I will make your load lighter. I will lessen the problem. He said, come unto me, and I will give you rest. He knows we get tired. He knows we get weighed down. We get exhausted mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, and we get to the point where we just can't take another step. And it's in those moments where he wants to gather us to him like a mother hen gathers her chicks, to have us close our eyes and to rest, to find renewal in him, renewal for our mind, our body, and our souls, so that together with him, we can then get back on the road and deal with our burden and the problem, but in a new way, with renewed energy, a new perspective. By the very nature of living, we all, all, are burdened. It just comes with life. That old song, I never promised you a rose garden. Well, I think God kind of did promise a rose garden because along with the roses, there are thorns. Life is both bitter and sweet. And Jesus is there for us as we walk through that garden and experience both. However, I'd like to propose this morning that there are burdens that we carry that we don't have to carry and that, in fact, we shouldn't be carrying. Back in the early 1800s, remember that Ohio was pretty much, um, Ohio and, and maybe even part of Indiana, was pretty much the western frontier. It was kind of like the end of civilization. Some people might argue it still is. But... 
people started hearing about this wonderful place way out it west called Oregon. It was the land of promise. And people gathered up everything they owned and they headed west along what would become known as the Oregon Trail. Now imagine what it took to start that journey. First of all, you had to decide what you were gonna take with you. They had to pretty much assume that most of what they needed for the journey, they would have to take with them. Remember, there wasn't a Walmart between here and Oregon. They couldn't just stop. So they had to take most of what they would need. They would have to take their personal items, and then they would have to take furniture and things that they would need to set up housekeeping when they got there. And space was limited in the wagons. So a great deal of time and energy was spent deciding exactly what they could and should carry with them. All along the Oregon Trail though, especially later in the journeys, um, later in time, as more and more people headed west, all along the Oregon Trail were personal items and household items scattered. You'd be riding along the trail and you'd find a dresser, a table. Farther up the road, you'd find a chair, a trunk. And that's because it was a tough journey. And a lot of times, they would lose to death or disaster um, an animal or two that were pulling those wagons, horse or oxen or donkey or whatever they were using. And so to lighten the load on the remaining animals, they would have to lighten the load and leave something along the way. And especially when they got to the, to the mountains out west, even if they hadn't had to lighten the load up to that point, they probably had to lighten it to some extent because pulling those heavy wagons up those mountains was an unexpected challenge. So at each phase of this journey, from start to finish, they had to take stock of what they were carrying and decide what they could leave. And I suggest this morning that we need to do the same. There are burdens we don't need to be carrying. Jesus came and died on that cross and rose again to eliminate those, some of those burdens for us. That guilt that we feel, the guilt we feel over things that we did that we shouldn't have done, things that we said that we shouldn't have said, or things that we left unsaid, or things we left undone that we should have done or we should have said. The shame that we feel when we look back and think about some of the things we've done. That general feeling of we're not good enough, or that we've disappointed people by not living up to our potential. Well, Jesus doesn't want us to carry that. He died so we don't have to carry that. We have enough burdens to bear in this life. Things we can't avoid. We need to take stock of what we're carrying and decide to leave behind along the path of life the things we don't need. So he's, he's calling us to come, come unto him. Leave those burdens of the guilt and the shame behind. You don't have to carry it. Drop it, drop it. And then go curl up in the shadow of his love. Feel his rest, his renewal, and his love and then go forth in life in the freedom from all that used to hold you down. So go, be free, amen.